This lesson we're going to talk a little bit about osmosis. We've referred to it a little bit before, but as a reminder for a definition for you, osmosis is the movement of water from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So this is really just a fancy term for the diffusion of water. Remember, diffusion does not require any energy, and remember in our cells, the energy that we use is called ATP. So let's take a look at a diagram that we have. In this diagram, it's representing a simulated cell. Remember that dashed or dotted line represents the cell membrane with the spaces in between representing the pores in between the lipid bilayer. In this case, we have two different molecules that are in here. We have water represented by blue dots and we have a solute, remember that's the thing that gets dissolved in the solution, glucose being green. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pause and try, and I'd like you to just to label the area of high concentration of water. So which side has a higher concentration of water? Okay, so now that you did it, which side had a higher concentration of water? This side had the higher concentration of water. The easiest thing to do is take a look at it and count the molecules. In this case, we had one, two, three, four water molecules, and on this side we had nine. So which way would the water move if it were to move based on osmosis? The water would move from an area of high concentration to low concentration. So in this scenario, we would move from right to left until it was equal. Remember that term was equilibrium. On the diagram that we have here, we have our water and we have our solute again. I'd like you to take a look at the model and I'd like you to do the same thing we did before. I'd like you to count the molecules, find where there's more water, and use an arrow to indicate which way the molecules would move. Which way would the water move? Where is there more water? So now that you paused and tried, where was there more water? Well, on the right-hand side was the greater concentration of water. That's our high side. So it's going to move from right to left again, from a high concentration, to a low concentration. Let's take this as an example for something that we did in our lab and something that we talk about in lab a lot. A lot of times we refer to a type of water called distilled water. You can even buy distilled water in the grocery store in special containers. Some people like to use distilled water in things like their um, irons and sometimes they like to use it in order to clean in some of their cleaning products and whatnot. Um, the reason why is because distilled water is what we call pure water. So I'd like you to think about what that means and I'd like you to try to figure out what the percentage of water would be in a distilled water solution. And then I would like you to try to determine what the percentage of water would be if we said that the solution contained 90% salt water. So pause and try, and I'd like you to put in the percentages of water and then decide where there's more water. All right, now that you've tried, let's take a look. Distilled water, if we call it pure water, it means nothing else is in there. So it's 100% water. In the case of somebody using distilled water in their iron, one of the reasons why they use it is because that would mean that there weren't any salts or anything else dissolved in it that could maybe clog up the iron if they were using this steam feature. Now for the 90, or the 10% solution of water, I gave away the answer. The 10% salt solution would have 90% water in it. We're going to assume that the salt was dissolved in water to make our solution. So which one has more water? the distilled water solution. So let's put this into a practical scenario. In the human body, we have red blood cells. Now remember, we are animals, so they don't have cell walls. So they're basically a circular kind of a shape. No cell wall, a very soft, flexible membrane. Let's pretend that we place it in a salt solution. Describe how the molecules will move based on osmosis. Now if you remember back, most of our body cells, including our red blood cells, are approximately 99% water. If we put them into a salt solution that has a 10% salt concentration, I'd like you to determine, try to figure out and describe which way would the water molecules move. And remember, salt cannot diffuse. Remember, salt breaks down into ions or charged molecules. Now that you've paused and tried, Let's see what you came up with. 
Well, the first thing we need to ask ourselves is, where is there more water? Well, if my red blood cells are made up of 99% water, and we put them into a 10% salt solution, that 10% salt solution would have 90% water, and inside my cells, I had 99% water. Where is there more water? There's more water inside the cells. So which way is it going to move based on osmosis? From high to low. So in this case, my water moves out of the cells, dehydrating the cells, removing the water from the cells. In the next situation, we've got our red blood cells again. And in this case, we're going to just recap what we did before. We have our red blood cell that has 99% water. We have a surrounding solution that has 90% water. And the water's moving from a high to low concentration. And remember, the water will move out of the cell.